The mainstream consensus is that around 8 million years ago the earliest ancestors of humans diverged from apes. There are at least a dozen human-like species called hominids which have lived on Earth. It is thought that these evolved in Africa and migrated outwards from there, but a recent finding turns this idea completely on its head and once more shows the extent scientists will go to to protect their old theories. Let's find out. In order to determine the evolution of any species they must first establish what sort of an animal it evolved from. For humans this required that they attempt to reconstruct the last common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees. Homonyms are species on our branch of the hominoid tree after the split from chimpanzees. Changes from an ape-like anatomy are discernible in hominoid fossils from the late Miocene in Africa. Some hominid species from this period exhibit traits that are typical of humans but are not seen in other living apes. The first traits to appear were bipedal walking and smaller blunt canines. Around 4 million years ago we find members of the genus Australopithecus, the first of which was discovered in South Africa back in 1924. Many more fossils found in these regions painted a picture that humans seem to have evolved here from the tree dwellers to land walkers and then slowly migrated outwards across the globe. This has become so ingrained that any evidence to the contrary is ignored or buried. So when paleontologist Gerhard Gilinski on his summer holiday on the island of Crete came across a footprint, he was not prepared for the violent denials he would receive from the paleontological community. He had asked some of his colleagues for their opinion on what he felt was a very human-like footprint and had somehow made its way onto a flat rock along the shore. The team came to the conclusion that the impression had been made by an ancient human ancestor a staggering 5.6 million years ago, making them the oldest footprints ever discovered in Europe. These footprints had been laid down during the Miocene era. During this time there was no water in the Mediterranean Sea. The scientific world was now faced with a rather uncomfortable notion that these footprints on this small Greek island were now the earliest known human-like footprints in the world, far older than the prints previously found in Africa. It may come as no surprise that this finding was made back in 2002, and it took them over six and a half years of living hell to try and get their paper published. Finally the paper was published in 2017 but it was largely ignored by the paleontological community. One other group also took notice and started to find similar fossil fragments that supported the idea that there was an earlier presence of hominins in Europe and possibly even that this was their origin. They too struggled to get any of their work published as the scientific community clung to the old narrative. Another related story to this concerns the supposed migration of Homo sapiens out of Africa. In an analysis conducted on a series of footprints left in the mud of a bygone body of water has identified seven which might belong to humans. If this find is confirmed it would place these footprints as the oldest traces of Homo sapiens ever found on the Arabian Peninsula. The mainstream idea of human migration is that human migration initially started on the African continent and then migrated outwards from there. It is believed that most non-African people alive today have ancestors who departed the continent en masse some 60,000 years ago. It is argued that it is possible that smaller groups may have migrated out much earlier than this. Amongst the finds they also discovered a trove of 233 fossils. These paint a picture of a much greener and wetter climate than existed there today, and this would make this an ideal hunting ground for the humans and hence a possible reason for the migration to here. They have however not found any evidence of stone tools or animal bones bearing the telltale marks of butchery. They also claim that it is unlikely that these footprints were made by Neanderthals, as they only migrated into this area after the date they identified for the sediment where they found these footprints. Many fossils and artifact finds have come from situations like this special lake bed in northern Saudi Arabia. Archaeologists uncover the site deep in the Nefer Desert at a location nicknamed the Trace in Arabic. 
In the paper, the scientists discuss how unlikely it is to find these footprints, stating, An experimental study of modern human footprints in mudflats found that fine detail was lost within two days and prints were rendered unrecognisable within four. And similar observations have been made for non-hominin mammal tracks. The mainstream concept for the formation of these types of fossil footprints in mud is that the footprint needs to be made in damp mud and then the footprint has to dry out. As stated in their analysis, this must occur within two days. Once dried out, it hardens and locks the footprint in place. Further layers of sediment are laid down on top and this compresses the sediment to form rock, thereby preserving the footprint. And this process takes tens of thousands of years, if not more. The footprints present a different case to normal fossils as these are a process whereby the chemicals in the original bones and tissues are replaced with other chemicals forming a rock-like material. There are no bones or tissues left to replace in the case of the footprint. All we are dealing with is a depression left in the mud. The chances of them happening would appear to be very rare. Yet a cursory search reveals quite the opposite. They would appear to be rather common. The big question is how easy would it be for the imprints to survive across tens of thousands of years, or even hundreds of thousands of years, let alone millions of years? Again here we can find an extensive catalogue of all types of animal footprints, perfectly preserved in stone. Now I admit I am no expert in geology, but when we look at these footprints and look at the explanation of how they are formed, to me the only way that these could be preserved for such a long time and then be uncovered as they are, requires something rather unique. Assuming that the footprint is made in mud, of just the right consistency, which is then baked dry over weeks and months, it then needs to be compressed by additional layers of material that get deposited on top of this. This additional material would surely need to be of a softer composition compared to the original mud in order for it not to fuse with the original sample. This would then allow the material to break off or wear away sometime in the future and reveal only the footprint. Now this in essence also comes back to the whole question around sedimentation and whether it is possible for this process to be sped up or done in a different way than conventionally suggested. So I guess what I'm trying to suggest here is if there is an alternative process that allows rapid sedimentation and rapid transformation of sands and other softer materials into harder rock, then this might be why we see so many footprints which are exquisitely preserved. This would also fit with the ideas put forward by Peter Mungo Jupp around the instant fossilization. Now these themselves are connected with catastrophic events like the ones I covered in the Earth in Upheaval series, and I would argue that the footprints we see here are not directly related to these types of events, as there are no fossilized remains found. Lithification is the process in which sediments compact under pressure, expel fluids and gradually become solid rock. Petrification is the replacement of organic material by silica in the formation of fossils. This process requires pressure and time. Sandstone is formed from this process. This can then be converted into other types of rock by metamorphism, where it changes to metamorphic rock. This usually requires both temperatures greater than 200 degrees Celsius and a large pressure. Some of these footprints are clearly in harder rock than sandstone. Is it possible that a similar process can occur on a smaller scale locally? Can an electrical event either through lightning or something else trigger the sudden hardening of the mud and possibly even the transformation of it into harder rock? Now I am no expert here, but I feel that this is something worth exploring further, especially as I see a massive overlap with the Earth in Upheaval series. We have the work of Guy Berhalt, who demonstrated that sedimentation can occur much, much quicker than previously thought, and then there is the work of Peter Mungo Jupp and Andrew Hall. There is also evidence that this fossilization process can occur almost instantaneously preserving the animals in a contorted shape and we see examples of fossils like this in Verona, Italy, which show animals preserved in contorted positions. We have examples of fossilized trees that seem to intersect many strata and still stand upright. And then there are the very strange petrified crabs found in spherical basalt boulders. There is a lot more to this that needs to be uncovered. 
as always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.